Awesome, so thank you. I'm thrilled to share um, some of the strategic drivers behind Adobe's in, uh, acquisition of Magento, um, share our point of view on experience-driven commerce, and talk about some of the new solutions that we're de delivering uh, and developing. Um, but one of the things that I'm gonna do before I begin is actually say I recognize or we recognize that not all of you, um, you know, are interested in Magento at this point of time. You might have made strategic investments in SAP, um, you know, commerce tools, and some of the other platforms. And you know, I want to start by assuring you um, that we will continue to not only support and innovate on Magento, but we'll continue to recognize the world of heterogeneity and support all of the commerce platforms. So unlike SAP with their OCC, we're not gonna to try to monetize it. With demand where or Salesforce, we're not gonna close down our APIs and force our partners to pay exorbitant fees um, to support us. We will be open. Um, so any platform, any store system, um, you know, we're going to support you with the commerce integration framework. But what we're here to talk to you about today is obviously why did Adobe acquire Magento? And you know, what is our point of view? So you know, first and foremost, if our acquisition criteria was based on just going out and looking for the industry leader, that would have been pretty easy. So I'll give you some stats here. Magento is the number one commerce platform by installs. Um, if you don't believe me, go to Internet Retailer, uh, where Magento has the number one position in the Internet Retailer Top 1000 top 500, European 500, B2B 300, LATAM 5 or 300, as well as the APAC. It is the number one um, most deployed platform in the world. It's also a leader in both the Gartner and Forrester um, quadrants and waves, respectively. Um, but again, that's not why we actually acquired Magento. Let's take a step back. As Gerd introduced, this is about a, a, a new world, if you will, um, where 97.8% of the value of innovation actually goes to imitators. In this world, there's no such thing as a unique product position because within three to six, three to six months, it will be copied, um, and that is not no longer a durable strategic advantage. So what is the durable strategic advantage is the experience. And again, experience is now the new brand. And as we think about commerce, commerce is everywhere. Unfortunately today, the majority of the industry um, and sites out there kind of force customers to come into the e-commerce site on their terms. Um, so in other words, I'm looking for an outfit. Um, I'm inspired on a media site. I want to you know, look at a runway show. And as soon as I kind of start assembling what I'm looking for, or it could be a B2B procurement scenario, I'm out in a community, I'm interacting with my peers, now I have to abandon that scenario and go shopping um, or procure my solution. And that is very different from the way Adobe sees the future of e-commerce and where we're moving. So if you don't believe me, let's just look at Amazon. So Amazon's, the key to their success really has been a culture that's based 100% around the customer. You can see the quote on the bottom left, and obviously you know the stats. Right now, Amazon accounts for 4% of total retail sales, 24% of e-commerce uh, sales. They actually have, um, or sorry, 44% of e-commerce sales, 24% of growth. And you know, they're now expanding into a growing array of categories with 70, um, I'm not even gonna say private label brands, but they're now becoming a house of brands. And on the B2B side, they now have, um, the B2B supplier marketplace has almost 400 million products. So how did they get there? Um, again, it's a maniacal focus on the customer. It's the flexibility of their platform and it's the precision with what with which they execute. So similarly, as we looked at the space, the experience, the flexibility, and the ability to execute, even when not every order is perfect. So, you know, I place the order, I wanna change it. I decide I don't wanna wait for it, I wanna pick it up in the store. Um, you know, I wanna be able to buy off-site through a partner. 
these were the drivers when we started defining what we were looking for um, and that really became the strategic thrust and the business case that drove us in this direction. So I'm gonna share a little bit about our point of view now, um, talk about some of the best practices that we're enabling, and as I do so, I'm actually gonna talk about the key capabilities that we're delivering along the way. But first, let me just take a moment to kind of set the context. So I think everyone is familiar with the word moment of truth or the phrase, and obviously, this is a critical decision point along the shopper journey. It was in fact originally coined by Procter & Gamble in 2005 as the first time a shopper experiences a product on the shelves um, in an aisle and they said they've got about two to three seconds to connect with that consumer. Since then, the concept has been continued to expand upon so you look at things like, of course, Google's zero moment of truth, which is an interesting take on it. Um, and of course, Google said the zero moment of truth is when you search for that product and type it into the Google search bar. Um, and others have talked about you know, the evolution of this concept. Well, over the past decade, it truly has evolved. If you think about how we interact with society and the world around us, we actually check our cell phones 150 times a day the average session is 70 seconds. What's even crazier is as you think about how that has now parlayed into our overall shopping experiences, what's happened is we're rarely going to the home page. We're rarely actually even dropping into a category page. In fact, we're coming in from some link, some mobile site, we're deep linking into that site, um, and what's happening is we're, we're doing so, and time on site has actually been, has dropped. The good news is page views has, have gone up, but actual time on site has gone now to about 7.3 seconds per page. So as, com as customers kind of parachute into the middle of this experience, they expect it's this essentially a micro moment where you immediately have to connect with them. And you know, it's beyond the behavior. As you look at, at neurological science, one of the things that truly fascinates me as I, I kind of dig into this area of shopper behavior um, is the fact that as we continuously engage in a behavior, our brains are actually reprogramming themselves. It's not just our EQ and our emotional expectations, but actually how our, our synapses um, or our brains are firing. And so what's happening is we are now going in, we're expecting immediate contextual engagement across every phase of that journey. Now that journey actually starts, the commerce journey does not start when that customer is on your site. It actually starts again in the awareness phase. And so let's talk about a scenario. Um, you know, so first and foremost, as Adobe looks at the beginning of the commerce journey, in the old world, I'm a merchant, um, I may have procured too many brown shoes this year, um, and this, these brown shoes are moving into a distressed inventory state. In the old world, the way it would work is I would start going through my tiered markdown process, um, and I would take a margin hit. Again, the way we now think about it with Magento Business Insights, we can now monitor inventory velocity. We can now predict um, you know, what the sell-through rate is on a specific category and identify that actually I'm, I'm hitting a specific anomaly um, or an exception in that product's accepted velocity. So now instead of marking it down, I can identify the who is actually buying these brown shoes, and clearly I'm not as fashion forward as maybe the next trend is, but they can target people like me, build a cohort, and now target immediately that cohort, which is me. So now as I'm shopping for these brown shoes and I'm in this discovery phase, I immediately, you know that you actually went out of your way to build a cohort, to build an audience, to target me, and now as I'm entering using target, um, we immediately recognize the context of why is Errol here, how can I engage them, um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about fluid experiences and target and how that's gonna work together in a, in 
um, an end-to-end -end journey. But again, we may or may not be on the site. We may be on our favorite media platform. Um, you know, we may be in a social forum looking for advice. Um, we may be in a third-party marketplace. Um, and you as sellers uh, and merchants need to be able to pick up on all of those triggers and create really rich experiences throughout. As we actually look at consideration or shopping again, our level of expectation with progress progressive web apps um, has also elevated. As we're now interacting with videos, we wanna be able to click them. Um, as we walk into the physical store, we don't wanna to talk to an associate, we wanna pull out our mobile device. And the algorithms that you target me in the physical store are actually going to be different um, than the algorithms that you use on your website. Actually, that's very similar to Netflix, right? So Netflix, they spent millions of dollars developing the perfect algorithm for DVDs. What they quickly learned is that the actual streaming business required a completely different set of algorithms. So now you have to recognize that physical, digital require that next level of um, customization in your algorithms. As we look at the purchase process, obviously I'm gonna hit this in a few slides, but things like Bingo Box and Amazon Go and the Mobi store, um, unattended stores have completely transformed how we check out and how we interact. And then of course, post-purchase, you need to keep that dialogue going. And so this is the world that we look at, the way we view the world. And again, when we think about these great experiences, they're not always high fidelity. They solve problems, they're inspirational, they're helpful, they, they essentially reduce decision fatigue. And so that's what you know, we're, our strategy is based on. And so over the next few slides, I'll actually give you some examples of how our customers are actually using the Adobe platform and the Magento platform to address these key moments of truth. Um, so Frankie, for example, I'll just talk a little bit about them. They're a kitchen supplier out of Europe. Um, one of the things they recognize is Pinterest has 70 million active shoppers that have actually clicked through buyable pins. Another opportunity or, or customer uh, company or platform, sorry, is House. I'm sure many of you who are homeowners love the platform. My wife and I are obsessed with it. Um, well, there's 20,000 suppliers now on House providing 10 million products. So for these, you not only have to be able to push your content out, but you have to do so contextually. And so as we look at some of the concepts that Gerd uh, covered earlier, fluid experiences now give us the ability to create these master experiences and tailor them to each specific touch point. We can take literally that, that PDP detail and we can push it out to house, we can push it out to Pinterest, we can push it out to third party platforms um, and again do so contextually and, and essentially as we look at you know, even third party platforms as a visitor comes to that site. Um, so, so the first part we're there, the next part um, with the integration of Target now, when you come to that site, we now know we've cached at the edge of network, we know where you're coming from and what to actually show you on that site experience. As we think about discovery, um, lo and behold, there's House. Um, and we start to think about, you know, obviously these great experiences, customers not only expect you to deliver this on your site, you know, the last best experience becomes the new norm for their expectation and engagement, um, but now again, you need to support on-site and off-site. Um, so again, as we look on the right side and we think about AR, bringing Creative Cloud, Adobe Assets into the fold, supporting um, some of the things that we're doing around shoppable video, shoppable media is absolutely on our radar. And that also extends into the store. Um, that logo, the white logo down there is Neiman Marcus. Um, and they use Adobe Experience Manager and Mamomi, um, again, to now help during that discovery phase to find you know, the perfect sunglasses, perfect makeup, shade, et cetera. As you now move to shopping as well, we start to see, again, reduction of that friction, and we start to understand, you know, now you know what you need, how am I gonna guide you to the right product? And whoever thought that an energy company would be interesting, but this site's pretty cool, it's at CoEnergy, um, and again, more with this dynamic front end as you go through this site, 
you'll see that all of the variables change so you can build the perfect plan in real time and see, again, the implications if I wanna go green, hybrid, multi-year contract, et cetera. And again, this is all written on Adobe Experience Manager. So not only has the experience changed, but the business models that we support have changed. Um, so one of the Magento clients, um, Nestle Baby Ness, um, through IoT, as the specific um, unit identifies that you're low on formula, it's actually gonna communicate with Bluetooth to your phone, automatically enter that order, and that you can set it up so it automatically orders for you, or you know, that it's gonna ask for approval because maybe you picked up some new formula at the store. Um, so it's not just about, you know, again, traditional business models, but really moving into this responsive replenishment economy. And, you know, of course, we also see conversational commerce as real. And if you've seen some of the things that we've done with our conversational commerce framework, specifically um, using fluid experiences with chat and our voice um, gateways that we're working on, you'll see that this is very real. Um, so Mercado, uh, I'm sorry, Morrison's and Ocado uh, in the UK are already using um, uh, essentially conversational commerce to build your shopping lists and add items to the cart. And then finally, obviously, we see checkout. And you know, again, with Magento, they offer rich payment. Um, they are also offering this single touch uh, checkout where literally with Amazon One Touch Pay, you can essentially authenticate with the phone that's integrated with your laptop and you never fill out a form, you never enter your credit card, it's all in there. And what's different here, again, is you know the PII and all of the, the your PCI compliance is handled, um, and I also finally hit or, or alluded to you know the unattended store. This is I think that's Amazon Go, but if you look at Mobi, um, the Swedish company in China, as well as um, Bingo Box and all of these stores emerging globally. Why do I throw this in here? That's physical, right? Well, now to guide customers through that unattended store experience, you need to use the same uh, capabilities. And frankly, you are now basically interacting with the physical world, but checking out digitally on your phone. So we expect and you know, aspire to using our commerce platform to now support all of these unattended experiences, because again, they have the same exact characteristics um, as a digital experience. Um, so finally, we look at the post-purchase and really making sure that not only do we provide great service, so if you go to um, one of the favorite ones I talk about is Apple, support.apple.com, that runs on AEM. We don't throw a bunch, of, or they don't throw a bunch of manuals at customers. They enable you to optimize your usage of Apple products based on your business problem. And when orders aren't perfect, we need to ensure that you know, you're able to quickly change them, that you're able to innovate them, et cetera. So again, with Magento order management, um, we now support the ability to support very flexible um, fulfillment and execution and order process flows, change the orders, et cetera. Here, of course, you see, um, you know, the Amazon offering where um, the, the delivery uh, person will literally go to your house, unlock your door for that period and drop in the good. So innovation is everywhere. And as the foundation for where we're moving, our strategy is to make every moment personal and every experience shoppable. Magento has an incredibly powerful API that's now exposed via GraphQL. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we're doing with Commerce Integration Framework and our focus on microservices and why, but it all starts with looking at this end-to-end -end experience and how we can transform it. And again, this is not about the dot-com store. This is about embedding commerce across the Adobe Experience Cloud. And obviously this is a multi-year vision, um, but you know, this is when you know, we were sitting with Shantanu and Brad, um, the decision criteria of what we were looking for is a platform that can support all of the processes that we just covered, not just across this digital journey, but across every business model um, across all these global territories. So, you know, not just in the US as you might look at maybe transacting in South America and Brazil, you have Banco Boleto, and in China you wanna use Alipay, and all of these different scenarios and plugins, and we felt that again, um, Magento was uniquely positioned with their extension marketplace to support all of these variants. Um, so that basically drove 
um, to, to where we are today. So what do we have to offer you? Let's try to build this out. So we're thrilled to announce the, um, I'll say limited availability, so we are currently in beta, of the new experience-driven commerce for Magento Cloud offering. And again, just like this vision that we articulated, what we've done is integrating directly through Magento's API. We've extended it, and we now integrate through a set of microservices. So first and foremost, if you're not familiar with microservices, what a microservice is, is think about building with Legos. Each business process and each business object is its own service. Why would you do that? Well, I think as we've already made the point, um, when you look at this omni-channel world we live in, when you look at these diverse scenarios that we have to support, let's just think about checkout or engagement. When you check out on a mobile device, IoT, the Nestle Baby Ness, um, you know, a sales associate app, each one of those business processes is slightly different. So rather than hard coding the application, what we're now able to do is provide a very flexible service. We, we offer these services on Adobe's, I know Gerd mentioned earlier, the I, Adobe IO platform includes a new platform as a service. So you can check it out, it's called the IO Runtime. It's based on Apache OpenWhisk, and all of the microservices that we've written our um, JavaScript running on Node.js. So super easy to use for you if you want to extend them, customize them, refactor them, so you can now take a business process, very quickly modify it. You're still on the back end using Magento as that system of record, but now you can support all of this unique business logic to check out, interact, and engage your customers across any of these properties. Um, maybe going top down, we can support a headless experience. Um, so if you're committed to progressive web apps and you know, maybe want to use one of these more um, SPA uh, approaches, you know, again, as GERD covered, we can do that and support the headless environment. Um, we can also do a hybrid deployment, which in the past used to be very unsexy, but if both systems are continuously in sync, um, you'll have a unified experience. And then, of course, we can deliver that full experience. The offering also includes, of course, Experience Manager, but due to the importance of real-time context and targeting, we also now are including Target as well as Analytics Foundation. And Analytics Foundation is significantly more competitive than maybe Google and some of the others out there because it does great things like anomaly detection. So as I mentioned earlier, these brown shoes are stacking up, they're moving into a distressed state. Um, Analytics Foundation will have the anomaly detection to identify that business exception um, and now enable you to take action on it. So it's about bringing the data, the experience, and that real-time context together. So as I mentioned, um, you know, first of all, uh, we haven't broadly announced this to the market because it's in beta. We are working with early customers. We would love to work uh, with everyone in this room, um, but you know, we, we are aggressively running down this, pay, uh, this track. It's been less than two months since we executed the acquisition, and we already have the first offering. Um, you know, we're already testing this and working with these live clients. Uh, again, for those of you that don't have uh, Magento but are interested in using AEM and some of these technologies, again, like I said, we're also supporting all of the other platforms out there, um, and our microservices are open. So as you think about this, um, in the past, we used to use more of a one-to-one -one integration between AEM and the commerce platform. By moving the integration and customization and, and extensions into the cloud, not only does it make it easier for you um, to, to essentially execute these extensions to the customer experience, but as you move to different platform versions, as you evolve your architecture, it makes it very easy to preserve that value. Um, so with that, uh, you know, um, I, I'm gonna show the same slide, obviously. Gerd talked a little bit about the Experience League, um, and we are you know, really pumping a lot of the insights, the community, et cetera, building that up around commerce and AEM, uh, and we're absolutely thrilled to work with you. Uh, so with that, um, if you have any questions. Yes, questions for Errol, anybody? 
this is all clear as can be? The strategy, everything? All right. Awesome. Oh, wait, wait, we got okay. one. We got one. Hey, Errol, um, can you talk a little bit about how uh, Magento may continue to be developed in parallel? Um, will it be kind of a standalone product? I know they've made a lot of investments in the B2B features, and you know, for customers that are on Magento, are they going to continue to upgrade to Magento 2 and to new versions of Magento 2, or, or can you just kind of talk about that a little bit? And get sure. There? That's a, it's a big question, so let me unpack it piece by piece. Um, and I'm going to answer maybe the question you didn't ask first. Um, are we committed to the open source version of Magento, right? There's multiple versions. Um, so first and foremost, Adobe has over 270 open source initiatives from everyone's beloved PDF to brackets, et cetera. So we will continue to support that. That's on its own trajectory, um, but specifically around what's our plan, um, you know, with Magento 2 and cloud and, and investment. Um, first and foremost, I'll take a step back and say, we actually are funding everything that I talked about with four additional scrum teams. Um, basically, instead of going in and slowing down their roadmap, um, we're actually, we acquired them, uh, now they're part of the Adobe family, and we've actually significantly invested in our development environment. So number one, the integration will not come at the expense of innovation. The roadmap key strategic priorities are number one, extending the APIs for all of the pieces I'm talking about with GraphQL, big investments in B2B, new sales channels that I covered, and continuing to essentially build out that core platform. Um, now what we expect is there's gonna be really two sales motions, if you will, or you know, I'll say the solution patterns. There will be those clients that maybe don't want Experience Manager and they can buy Magento with Target Analytics, et cetera, um, and probably less relevant to this audience. And then on the AEM side, what we're calling this experience-driven commerce offering. And so what we're gonna do is, you know, we're gonna continue not only to invest in that, but also build out all of the supporting commerce of capabilities in the Adobe Experience Cloud. So in that model, our teams work side by side the development team that we have in Basel is working directly with the Magento team um, to support this, not, not only integration, but innovation. So looking at fluid experience, progressive web apps, our teams are collaborating there. 